morning, good morning, good morning, beautiful people. Good morning. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day. Thank you for another day of monster wood living. A monster living. Hi, Pippi Robinson. Good morning, sister. Dewana Baker, good morning. Danielle Thomas, good morning. Chandra Merrick, Sheridan Smith, Vonda Jones. Nah, we ain't got the grandbaby yet, girl. We ain't got the grandbaby yet. She was three centimeters when she went to her little doctor's appointment. You know, they check them every week when they get so far along. And she was three centimeters. They did a service sweep on her. So last night she was uh, spying a little bit on the tissue. I thought it was going to be it. She said she wanted to go to sleep and get her some rest. And, and so she can let everything sink in that she's actually finna be a new mother. So I, I, I think her reality is coming in now. So, um, later on, if we get to her in the joint song, we're gonna go to the hospital. But I already told her when she go to the hospital, you will not be leaving. <laughs> Cause that is not a regular doctor's appointment. That hospital ain't gonna let you leave like that. Uh, Miss Kathy, I am feeling better this morning. Hey, Miss. Oh, that's a Mr. Mr. Stefan Lucas. Petrina Gray. Diana Finley. Don Nemer. Hey, Buki. Hey, Miss Don. I saw you a lot on my um, comments and stuff the other day. I think I had said something to you. Oh, Miss Vonda, I don't know what they waiting on. I guess they didn't want us. I don't, I don't know what they waiting on. But, but so last night was our last night because I told them we can go today and have the baby. Let's, let's pull up and have the baby. Let's meet up at the hospital. <laughs> hmm. uh, you get a break. It's not too early for pop. Okay, 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 okay. Well, you know, I'd be having that drink. I pray that the baby come on my birthday. When your birthday, Lakeisha Miller? And Tia Monique, yes, ma'am. I am excited. I am excited. But I'm like her. I was like, oh, Lord, I got this going to be the last night. Oh, thank you, um, Miss Donna Kern, for sharing. Y'all, share the video. Please share the video. I'm not going to say nothing else until y'all share the video. Share the video. I'm drink my drink. Take her walking. No. Ah, uh -uh, she ain't going to um, go no walking. She going to go right, go to that hospital and lay on that bed. I could walk down me to message you. Shit. Thank you, Miss Kathy, for sharing. Y'all, I need to see some shares, shares, shares. I asked y'all. I told y'all what they say. Like, share, love. Like, share, some. But y'all need to share, comment, love, everything. Hey, Madonna Kern. Hey there, lady. You are glowing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tiffany Norman, for sharing. Thank you, Miss Vera, for sharing. Deidre Davis, for sharing. Thank y'all so much for sharing. I just shared. You are an awesome person. Thank you, Miss Renita. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. That was a small blessing to me. Thank y'all so much, and I want God to bless y'all. I want God to continue to bless y'all and give y'all the desires of y'all heart. Thank y'all. Uh, Annie Walker, love you, queen. So happy for you and your daughter. About your grandbaby, I just love you. Okay. And I love you too, Miss Annie Walker. Kathy McCoy, how is Lonzo? Lonzo doing good. Uh, he's doing good overall as we go into the feelings and emotions. You know, that's what I be 
really into the feelings and emotions because that's what we try to hide. That's what make us act out. That's what, what make us do certain things. Thank all my people for just sharing. Thank y'all so much. Uh, Rain, Patricia, Lena, uh, Cecilia, Cecilia Jefferson, Cecilia, Cecilia, Cecilia. Okay. Okay. And thank you. Okay. Thank you. I was sharing. But yeah, so Lonzo's been doing good um, for the most part, especially, like I said, with feelings and emotions. And it's a, um, not last night, but the night before. Last night was two. Okay. So they made Monday. So I guess that's when I had my little um, breakdown or whatever. So I did try to bounce back, come back and regroup or whatever, which I did get out of the house. But I still weren't really feeling it, y'all. So, um, I did, and I had a little breakdown when he came home, when I got home from football practice and stuff. And he just, he just stood there, he just held me, and I just was hollering and screaming on, you know, on his chest or whatever. But I let, I let it out. I let it out. I let it out. I let it out. And then I had to uh, take my medicine and go lay down and stuff because it felt like I was going to have a panic attack. My anxiety was up. My nerves are already bad. Real, 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 real bad. So, Lozo, once again, it's being the rock. It's being the rock. <laughs> and it's right, wavery boat. Being the rock in the middle of the storm. Okay, who birthday was 9-11? Happy birthday, 9-11. Happy birthday, 9-11. Okay, so what we're going to do this morning, y'all know we got to have a little word. Yeah, Miss Renita, it was something I had to let out. And I don't know, because we had to look it up. I had to make sure I didn't have no heart attack. Because <laughs> it was like my, my chest was getting real um tight and I couldn't hardly breathe. So we looked it up and it was like, um, asthma or anxiety, and it was something else, but it wasn't a hard attack, so that was a blessing. And, um, yeah, I, 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 I guess, and I, I can't even really say morning because I, I don't know, I don't think I actually mourned nobody, what, 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 whatever, however. That could be, you know, I guess I, I cry or have my moments or talk about it or whatever, but I just try to press on and move on. Um, okay, Miss uh, Renita Graves, you had the moments. Yes, love your journey back to health and happiness. You can do it. Yay, Miss Kathy. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I can do it. I can do it. Okay. Go and drink your wine, sis. Go and drink your wine, Keisha. Okay, so now the day is September the twelfth, correct? Today is the twelfth. Cause y'all say it was nine eleven. Okay. Oh, did y'all see y'all the other day we had somebody on here from um we had somebody on here from Pakistan the same day when I was crying, and then we got someone on here now from um Guano. Guano, strong woman. I'm watching you live in Guano. Okay, Mr. Matt. Oh, I remember you. I remember your name. Can you share my video over there in Guano? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now. Yeah, so we, we traveling, y'all. Our words traveling. Our little faith to faith and our Bible studies is traveling. Our little testimony is traveling. Our testimonies are traveling. So these folks want to hear a little word today. So let's give them a little word out the faith to faith. All right. Roll the song back. Like, here you go. All right. September the 3rd is called Real Intercession. When someone hurts you, our natural human reaction is to strike back. To ask God to clobber them. 
But that's not God's way. I realized that one time when some relatives of mine got robbed, I was praying about the situation and puzzled over it. Lord, I began to ask, why did you let that happen? Why didn't you just knock that thief over the head when he tried to do that? Suddenly, God enabled me to back up from that situation and look at it with spiritual instead of just purely natural eyes. When I did that, I knew the answer to my question almost as quickly as I had asked it. It was because of his mercy. God has great, great mercy, not just for me and my family, but for theirs too. So not just for me and my family, but for y'all's too. He got great mercy for y'all too. All right, that's my baby mama right there, y'all. She all right right now. I'm going to go crank her up in a minute. All right. Think about the next time someone does you wrong. Instead of asking God to knock that person in the head like I did, consider the fact that as, as ordinary as he may be, he may well have a grandmother somewhere who's praying for him to be saved. That was cute. He may well have a grandmother somewhere who's praying for him to be saved. Stop and remember that God loved him enough to die for him. That he's longing to pardon, not punish. Then you can begin to pray for him instead of against him. Uniting yourself with Uniting yourself with his grandmother or anybody else who happens to be praying for him. You can go to the Lord for mercy for him and you can go up against the devil on his behalf. Standing in the gap. Thank you, Miss Kelly Turner. Okay, you can go to the Lord for mercy. I'm going to say this one more time, y'all. Everybody who got Somebody, your child, your grandchild, anything that's out here doing the most is my children, my child. I can go to the Lord for mercy for him and you can go up against the devil on their behalf. That's real intercession as it throws the forces of darkness into total confusion. Read that one more time, because we always talk about we go and we battle against spirits and principalities, the spirits of darkness. So it says that's real intercession, and it is thrown, and it throws the forces of darkness into total confusion. They have absolutely no defense against it. Did you hear that? They have absolutely no defense against it. The law is looking for people who are bold enough, committed enough to do that. He's looking for people that's bold enough to stand in the gap. Who committed enough to you, to him, to go against these spirits, these evil thoughts, these evil actions, these wrongdoings in your behalf, speaking for you, interceding for you, wanting the best for you, hoping and praying the best for you. Somebody else could be praying for you, standing in the gap for you. Even when we forget to pray, even when we ain't praying, even when we going on about our business, you don't know who could be interceding for you. Because God gives all of us that power. Some of us just need to utilize that power. Okay. When you're tempted to clobber somebody, 
dare to change his life instead. So dare to change his life instead. Dare to wish the best for him. Dare to wish that he's going to change. Dare to wish that he's no longer going to act the same, think the same, be in those same ways. That's what we need to do for our people, for our circle, for your neighbor, for a person that's acting ill and out of hate, out of anger, acting ways that we know are foolish. How about that we say that? And so we can intercede for them, going to the throne for them and putting those spirits and that devil in total confusion so they don't know how to act. They don't know what's coming next and knowing that they trick did not work. Now, bam, the end. That was it. Told y'all it was going to be quick. So, when we go back up here to a uh, real intercession, well, the little verse said at the top, because somebody had inboxed me and asked me what book this was, they were going to order one. So, it also has a scripture up here. So, I'm going to read to y'all from the scripture, because I always tell y'all, if somebody came back, they word or, or show you nothing in scripture, you have to know it for yourself. So, and he saw that there was no man and wondered, and there was no intercessors. Isaiah 59, 16. And some of us can be left out there in the wilderness by ourselves too. And we can be going through a spiritual battle. Or somebody we know can be going through a spiritual battle. Just like I told y'all in my situation. And I left him out there in the wilderness because I got tired in the fleshly realm. I got tired of praying for him. I got tired of watching him do stupid stuff. And and we get tired. We get tired. And we have the right to be tired. But you got to have somebody that's also praying for you to go up against these different spirits and principalities that's in the word. Because sometimes we have people that don't know the word. And the only word or the only God that they know is through you. So that's why we need to be lined up and doing what we are called or know to do. Even if that's just a little better. Just do a little better. That's all. All right. So now, since that's it, and y'all know we don't have the questions in this book. Like we have in Day of Bread, we had the two questions. So I have, I can just ask, who do y'all have or had in y'all life that y'all know was interceding on y'all behalf? Me, I knew my grandma was always interceding and praying for me on my behalf. And so, like I said, I had a praying grandmother, and I know enough to call on the name of Jesus. That's a song, too. But back to what I've been saying. You are so pretty, good. I love you. Preach that word. Okay, uh, Miss DJ Davis said she had her daughter, Brianna Young, praying for her. Miss Tia Monique said her pastor. Uh, Miss Chandra Merrick said her mama and grandma. Bless they heart. Bless, bless y'all heart. Okay, mom. Oh, Jesus. The one the baker, you should be covered. You had your mom, your grandma, your great grandma, and your brother. And Miss Rain Williams said she had her uh, mother. My mom and my sisters forever bless Williams. And that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Because y'all had people. Okay, yeah. Um, but that's a blessing. Y'all had people that was in the sea, working on y'all behalf, praying for y'all, uh, wanting the best for y'all. And I, 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 I just I get caught back up on that part because... 
I don't know who I'ma have intercede for me. Now I guess y'all can intercede for me while y'all praying. When they be like, um, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Is, do y'all think that's interceding for me? Can we call that interceding? Because I don't have that, um, uh, get it right. I don't have that, um, uh, person that I know. Was praying and interceding on my behalf. Okay, they were praying and interceding on my behalf. So do y'all? Okay, y'all think that's it? They y'all think y'all is? So y'all, that ain't no job that's too big for y'all. I have me when I found God. There you go, Miss Um Linda Roller. So now I guess I gotta be my my biggest supporter. I gotta be my own uh intercessor. But I got y'all. I got y'all. And I know that y'all are always praying for me. I know. I know. I know. Don't get all serious. There y'all go. Miss Kelly Turner, I always interceded for you, Ebony. We are interceding for each other, Butterfly Nation. That's right, Sister Chantry. Sometimes you have to learn to... I, don't, I can't really read what you're saying, Miss Love, but I think I got it. Sometimes you have to learn to hold on your, I don't, I don't know, but I think I got it. Okay, Miss Danielle Thomas, I'm praying for you, sis. I would always put you on the prayer list at church. Okay, thank you for ever blessed with me. So, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all for interceding for me. Yes, we do, and the Holy Spirit will always intercede for you. Yes, yes, yes. The Holy Spirit. Spirit will always intercede for us, Miss Annie Turner. Now you said something. Yes, he will. And remember when we were talking the other day. Okay. Can you hear me better now? And then remember we were talking the other day when we were talking about how sometimes we be so full and we get on our knees or we start to pray and we don't even know what to say out of our mouth. Or we don't even know how to pray. And sometimes it could be so much or whatever. But the Holy Spirit already knows what to pray for. The Holy Spirit already knows what we need. The Holy Spirit already know how to go before the throne. For us. He intercedes for us. And that is the greatest of all. The Holy Spirit interceding. And taking it to the throne for us. He does it does the things that we cannot do for ourselves. So that's the reading on Isaiah 59, 16. If y'all want to go back and look at y'all word in y'all books. Yes, okay, thank you, Miss Um Captain Freeman. So, hey sister! That's my sister Rachel. Y'all remember her and Skylar? Do y'all remember her and Skylar? I love you, sister. I love you. And I hope and pray that you are doing well this morning. God is good. God is good. Yes, he is. And today is a new day. We get a chance every day to start over. Waking up, holding on to nothing from yesterday. Holding on to nothing from our past. Nothing that's going to hold us back from moving forward. Nothing. Think about it. Most of uh, don't know you personally. And just the fact that you one day showed up on our timeline is not by happenstance. It is ordained. Oh, thank you, Miss Deidre. That's why I said God knew that I was going to need so much support. Because he know that, you know, I was, you know, a hothead, you know, kind of crazy, you know, kind of stuck in my ways, kind of want to do what I want to do and stuff like that. So he knew that, you know, he was just getting a little tired of me doing what I wanted to do. So he had to, you know, slap me on the side of the head, slam me back down and stuff like that. So he knew that breaking me down was. Was gonna not be comfortable, you know. 
So he knew that I was going to need a whole big support system. And he blessed me with the nation to be here for me. He knew that my grandma was not going to be here no longer. He knew that I was going to go through all these different changes, all these different situations, all these different tests, all these different trials. He knew all this hurt was going to come. He knew all this and blessed me with all of y'all. So you're right, Miss Turner. It was already ordained. It is not a mistake that I end up on y'all timeline. And it is not a mistake that y'all end up following me or listening to me. Because when I ended up on y'all timeline, it was something that very first time that grasped or caught y'all attention that made y'all watch me again. It was something that was said that made y'all listen to me again. And he knew that. And he knew just what to do to me. And he knew that y'all was going to need me and my voice as well. Now, that's all I got to say back there. That's it. That's all. So get what? We need each other. That's why we came back to grow with each other. That's why we gonna lean on each other. That's why we're gonna support each other. That's why we're gonna grow daily. Yeah. And that's why when I ask these questions or y'all make comments and stuff, he also knew that it was gonna be something that could help me. Because it's always Somebody on here that's older than me or done been through something similar or can tell me something or that can relate to me as well. It ain't just me helping y'all. Y'all can just hear my voice and I can't hear y'all, but I can read. So maybe he gave me the mouth and gave y'all the ears to listen and then Y'all speak on this typing thing. Look at the one on the back. Go on, try to let everybody know you've been here since day one. I might have missed some lies, but I'm not going nowhere. Baby, we know you've been here, Team Butterfly Nation. Team Butterfly, the one on the back. I'm, I'm Team the one. Keisha Dennis, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yeah, did your daughter have the baby yet? No, let's go put her in labor. I think we're going to put it in labor. We're going to pull up at the hospital, get everybody to meet. Well, she don't want nobody in the uh, delivery room except me and the baby daddy. She want me to film me, child. Oh, my God. Jesus, she want me to film. I say, you want me to film down there, too? <laughs> you want me to film that down there? Oh. But I don't know if she want me to film that down now. I think it's just the 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 the, the, the motion of it. Okay, I guess we do. I need you. So sometimes when you don't have words, just tell the Lord you hear. I know that real Miss Hour. Sometimes when I don't have words and you, you sometimes you just be stuck. But I promise you, the Lord know your heart, He hear your heart, He feel your heart, He already know what you need. Yeah, you, you got to be down there asking him, oh, Lord, I need this. Oh, Lord, I need that bill paid back. Look, the Lord know you need that. The Lord, I already know. You ain't got to be, <laughs> keep on saying, <laughs> <laughs> Who that was, Melinda uh, uh, Ferguson? Love you, everyone. Today. Yes. So, I don't want to hold y'all up, but I did want to come and read this. Uh, word for y'all today. I missed y'all on yesterday. Um, because I went, I don't call it work. I call it, I, I'm just, because I'm helping somebody. And it's, it's, and the job is, is simple. If you already know what you're doing in the healthcare field, that's helping, take care of somebody. And at the same time, it's helping me. 
You feel me? So I'm not focused on me. I'm focused on making sure they straight, making sure their needs are met, making sure they comfortable, making sure they ate, making sure they feel all right. So that helps get the focus on me. So I'm not worried about how you feel or is this or is that. And it, I don't have time to sit up there and think about how I feel or get stuck in no um, depressed state or whatever. So also talking to y'all is like my, it's like therapeutic, you know, it's kind of therapeutic. Would you call this therapy? So this is my um, therapy class. This is my therapy session. This is my therapy session. And I go to counseling. How we go to counseling with at least once we going once a day we want you to go to counseling. Uh I've been going like three times a week with y'all. And this is my counseling. It's and so I don't um because sometimes you can go in there to a therapist or psychiatrist and you don't even open up. You don't even tell them what's really wrong with you. You just sit there or tell them what you want them to hear. But I don't think I would open up to a counselor or therapist the way that I opened up to y'all because I felt different about this situation because I know this situation was ordained. This situation was put before me. This situation was something that I had to go through. So I knew that I wasn't finna harbor all of those ill feelings and let them weigh me down like I have done so much in my past. I I had refused to do that. So I couldn't do nothing but put it all on the table or try to express my feelings. And y'all know in the beginning we had to, we had to work through that process. Because I was going live like two, three times a day, every day, every day. It was something new to me. I was crying. I was laughing. I was mad. I was crying. I was laughing. I was preaching. I was doing a lot of stuff. But we made it. We made it. Yeah, with the help of God. So it was all ordained. It was all orchestrated. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. No. Uh, Terry, no. Yeah. Y'all know Terry Mine, Terry Mine. Um, they coming in um Alabama, you've been nothing but honest and yourself. Yep, that's what I tried to do. I try not to harbor all those feelings and stuff in. I try not to act like everything just all right or like I don't give a you know, care. So I tried to express myself the best way I could, even when expressing myself wasn't something that I wanted to do. I didn't want to just open myself up like that either. I didn't want to, but I knew I had to. This was a whole spiritual walk journey or whatever you want to call it. And it was all from the beginning. That's why I placed a video on there. I placed one on there from the doctor, which we knew we had been at Dr. Visits and everything. I was trying to find one where they had took the x-rays and um, y'all could see all the metals and um, stuff in there. But I, I know that I still had one where they took the picture and um, you can see in this eye, right here, my right eye, that it, it didn't even have nothing in the socket but a man in my eye and this one had the eyeball in it but this one didn't have no eyeball in the socket and y'all do do y'all remember that picture do y'all remember that one so this this just has yeah this just has been a a journey that was just unbelievable and if you didn't watch it from the beginning yes i cried laughed oh yeah i cross people I, oh in the beginning my mouth was, was, was they were, they were irritating me. They were 
bother me. I ain't did nothing to them. Did it, Mr. Warren. I don't do nothing to them. And they couldn't understand what was going on. And I couldn't tell them. That's why I, I come up with no phrase. They're going to be lost. They all lost in the south. This shit bigger than me now. Because it was all. It, and you, you just had to be there. And I was being shown so much and going through so much. I couldn't even really believe it myself. So if, if you didn't watch it, you ain't going to be able to believe it. But it was going to all come together. And it's still coming together. But I'm going to say it today. You just had to be there. Because this has been a journey. A real journey. But that's why I placed the old video on there. I placed the one, like I said, from the doctor. Where they was, oh, you know, I'm a miracle patient. They they pulled out their phone and video my face. They could not believe it. They had never had a patient that that face that that closed and healed like mine. The police officer that I did get to speak at the um event and the event I'll tell you, hold on, but you know, she was in the emergency room when I woke up. And, you know, she told you know, to this to that day when I met her, she still had nightmares on what she saw in the emergency room from my whole face dropping. You know, I told you I had dropped. My whole face dropped and I felt it swinging like a, 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 a the fat on a rooster neck. You were just swinging. You feel me? So I can't imagine what she saw with her eyes because those are some pictures I never want to see in my life. I already got slapped in the face with the with the x-ray looking like a skeleton. What I thought I was going to look like in the first beginning. That's why I cried out at the hospital and said, oh God, take me. I didn't want this battle. I didn't want this battle. I was tired of fighting all these battles and races and doing what you done placed before me. This one right here in my physical mind all I can remember is being shot in the face. So I know I got a big old hole in my face. And all I can remember is my face dropping. So I'm knowing in my fleshly mind, my real mind, that half of my face is gone. Okay? I remember this. I know this. Big old, so I don't know what other damages are done. So when I woke up, I didn't want to fight that, you know. I, I don't want to deal with that. And so I always thought that I was going to look like a skeleton. You feel me? In health class that they had. And so when I went to the doctor and I was, t I was like facing forward. And you know how they be over there and they had little screens and stuff. And so I was facing forward. And when I turned and seen that damn skeleton. It was like I was just, I was stuck, you feel me? Because that's, that was what I feared. That that was what I thought from the beginning. And when I seen that skeleton and I seen all of those screws and all of that, all of them different A, B, and C, and D things and seen how much damage was actually done, it made me feel some type of way. And I got in my feelings, and that's when I say that I was constantly slapped in the face with surprises during this whole ordeal. Even to me trying to get my teeth pulled over there and finding out that I had a plate on top of my damn lip, you know. And that was like a, a, a year or something later. So it was like a lot of times... When, yeah, that was a very emotional day for me, Miss Deidre Davis. It, it really was. So I learned a lot because I didn't never want to know what happened. I never asked one question of what happened. The only reason I know what kind of gun it was is because my daughter told me because she asked. And to those that don't know, it was an AK. And I was not shot close range. He was 
on the sidewalk and I was actually sitting in my truck on the phone with the police though. So that's the only reason I, I know that, like I said. And then, you know, the hall was so big, it, they told me my eye was going to be gone. My eye, you know, you can see in the beginning, my, my eye was real swollen. And we used to have to pull it apart. On the line, we used to have to pull it apart, mat it together, everything. So we went through, through different, different stages. My mouth was wired together. I had wires in, in, on my teeth and stuff. When I came home, they told me to eat out of a syringe. I was supposed to have been eating out of a syringe. But I never did what they told me to do. I told them I was not eating out of a syringe because I was not handicapped. I was not finna pre rate no food because I wanted to taste my damn food. So I ate my food. Sliving, spinning, getting caught in my braces and everything. We ate right over here. And I had this, these little teeth gone. Thank you, Jesus. And I just keep it real to 100. You know, I had them teeth gone back there. I'm taking them pills all them years because the pill is the enamel off of your teeth. So, don't be no fool. So, let me tell you. So, but God knew that too. He made a way of exit. I used that and I smushed that food right in there. I smushed it right in there on the line. And we went through all that. What they told me, my mouth was twisted like this when I first came home. Like I had had two strokes. They told me that they was going to get a nerve out of my neck. They had a big surgery. They had three surgeries planned for me. Look, <laughs> the one said spinning because, well, they would bother me. But listen, they told me they were going to get a nerve out of my neck and put it on the side of my mouth to get my smile back. To get my smile back. It's still crooked, but guess what? And I'm about to go on in my neck. I told them I had to rip at the doctor. But that wasn't going to happen. You ain't going in my neck. No, sir. Ain't no way. No, Jesus. Fix it. Fix it, Lord. You ain't going in my neck and doing nothing. I don't even need to know the second part. And guess what? Every Sunday, I went to church and, and song and song them devotions and praise and worship. And that mouth started twisting, 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 then it, then it started moving a little bit. Then it started moving a little bit. They told me to put the popsicle stick things in there. They, they, they opened it up. One popsicle right here. One popsicle right there. They, 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 they stretch it right there. No. I said, I, we tried that too on the line. I felt like a, a, a retard. We weren't finna do that either. So get where God started stretching their mouth. Started stretching their mouth. The lips, it's open. It's open. They told me they were going to have this big old skin drop because the hole was so big. They had did the thigh. I had drunk the stuff so they can go on and my veins can light up. They were going to get some skin off my arm and my leg. They were going to have to get it out two places because my hole was so big. But now, God started closing that thing up. Closing that thing up. Every time I went to the doctor, closing up, closing up, closing up, closing it up. Closing it up. So I knew my situation was never of this world because they told me that I was going to be 100% paralyzed. They told me that my right eye was gone. And then we would go all the way back before they even told me all that. They pronounced me dead. So what are we talking about? You know? So man, you know, man can't tell me nothing about my life. Everything that y'all said was a lie. The ambulance driver told my cousin that I was dead. So what are we talking about here? So get what? The old Ebony did die. She died. And get what? The new Ebony. Well, when I woke up in the hospital, throwing up all that blood. Coming up out that bed, sweating, hurting. 
I ain't never felt no pain like that in my life. It hurt so bad and so much. The garbage can wouldn't even hold. It was so much blood. It was so much blood. And I was just doing my head like that. When I came home, I had blood matted in my head. I was still going live. But guess what? I was washed in the blood. I was washed in the blood. When I was doing my head like that, and I, I, God was cleansing me up. God was cleaning me up. He was creating in me a new heart, creating a new preacher. So, get, get what? Just like they say in the word, you got to die to yourself. You got to die. So, Ebony died. The old Ebony died. And a new Ebony was born. And that's how they went. And so, I was just obedient when I came home. And so, that's why I had to open up to y'all. That's why I had to forgive. That's why I couldn't hold no animosity in my heart. Because God had blessed me and did the unimaginable. God had did for me what I couldn't do for myself. God had did what man, everything that man said, he had turned it around. So as long as God in control of this situation, who, who am I? To harbor ill feelings. Who am I to not forgive nobody? Am I going to forgive the person that shot me in my face? Yes, I'm going to forgive them. Why? Because guess what? Releasing that releases me. Releasing that releases me. Why am I going to hold on to ill feelings to somebody that end up in the grave? You end up committing suicide. And killing yourself. You shot yourself in the head. On the same side. That you shot me. And thought I was dead. But you ended up dying for real. So why am I mad at somebody. That got to let the enemy treat them. Why would I be mad. About something. That end up being the best thing that ever happened to me. Why? You can't hold on to those feelings when you asking and need God to move for you. This girl, your mouth wide up, and I'm saying it not just because uh you need to share your story with the world. This is the world, living love. But if you know any other kind of way, then share it. But listen, check this out. And I ain't just saying in my situation. You know what I'm saying? I, my mouth wired up. Don't, my eyes matted together. Gone. I got a big old hole in my face walking around here. I got out the hospital one day. The next day I was up and driving. Outside. Handling my own business. Trying to attend to my own affairs. But you walk around here with a hole in your face. What? Is this a movie? Is this a Terminator? This is a creature. This is a animal. Ain't nobody believing in it. I, I wouldn't believe if it wasn't me. You feel me? So guess what? You walking around here, busted and disgusted. Now I'm talking about y'all. Busted and disgusted. Life all messed up. Can't do nothing for yourself. You can't depend on nobody but God. So why would you hold animosity and stuff in your heart and then turn around and tell me you need God? How? It ain't going to work. It don't work. How you ain't going to forgive somebody, but then you want God to forgive you? You want God to move a mountain for you. What you doing for him? What you, you still trying to chastise somebody that you can't even chastise? No. So that's why I did what I did. That's why I forgave. Because you have to think sometimes. And I know we all be on different levels and stuff like that. But let it soak in. Let it soak in. We ran here. Claim we trying to get our life together. Trying to move forward. Try asking God to lead us and guide us and set things up for us. And Lord, I know. But what are you doing? You stick, you, you, make it make sense. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. So that, that's why.
<laughs> you know, I was a fool. And that's that's really what brought all the attention. That's what brought all the attention when I buried my husband. Yes, I did forgive him. Did I have did, did I want to bury him? No. I'm flesh, I'm human, and I'm tell the truth. No, I did not want to bury him. I said, he shot me, he shot himself his whole way. You feel me? That's it. I ain't even got no attention to going no further, no nothing like that. But guess what? When we talk about that little inner man or God's voice or whatever, and God told me I had to stand. I said, what? No, Lord. I said, I know you playing. I know you playing. And then, you know, see, I talked to him like I'm talking to y'all. That was on a Friday. That Saturday came, it was still on me. That Sunday came, I took the trip to the skate ring, tried to get out, do something different, get it off my mind. I ain't worried about this. It's still on. I'm in the middle of the skate ring crying. Because God told me I had to stand. I had to wrestle with God all, all weekend. Not no night. I wrestled with God all weekend. Guess what? And I lost that battle. Because I can't go against God. And I can't go against what he said. And I can't go against what he told me to do. Because I don't want to. I, 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 I had to get out the way. I had to get out the way. So that Monday morning came. I had to get that marriage certificate. With that big old bandage on my face. I stayed in the hospital two weeks. I was home six days. Six. Six days. Not one week. I was at home six days when that man killed himself. So, it's seven, eight, nine. Because we count the weekend. Seven, eight, nine days. And here I go with a big old bandage on my face, still frail, little, because I was smaller than this, short winded, leaning on the walls, walking in front of my home. Them folks seen me, and I told them what was going on. Them, them folks looked, looked at each other like they had seen a ghost. Like it was unbelievable. Like what in the world? And I know, because it's the same way I felt too. But I had to walk on. I had to press on. I had to push on. And I had to be obedient. And that's why I tell y'all, sometimes being obedient ain't fun. Sometimes walking with God means you have to stand alone from the rest of the people. But you have to be obedient. And so guess what else? Like I told y'all. So after I did that and I was obedient with God, I was stupid to the whole world. I was stupid. I, I had battled one syndrome. I was crazy. I was making excuses for him. I, 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 I loved him. So it ain't had nothing to do with that. Nothing. Nothing at all to do with that. And so guess what else? I showed the whole world how to forgive like God would do. Not like we would do because we wouldn't have did nothing. And so that is how my platform grew and that very incident is what made me global. And that was all because that's what God wanted. God wanted the world to see how to forgive. God wanted to show somebody that was harboring unforgiveness in their heart to forgive. If this lady can forgive this man after everything that he did to her, then why can't I forgive my sister and brother? And it's nothing to that extent. I had to still stand when my child walked out my front door. My girls went against me. 
They couldn't understand why I was bearing this man. So my decision also put other people in their feeling and emotion and not understanding until they left me alone. And sometimes you're going to go through an alone season. But that's okay too. Because God has already prepared a table. And when it's all said and done, I want to I wanna be able to make him say, well done. Job well done. My good and faithful servant. Through everything that you went through, through everything I put you through. And that ain't it. That just was the physical outside. We have been going through so many other emotional and situations throughout this duration. So it don't even make no sense. So I, I suppose be, the average person would be somewhat in a mental institution somewhere. Somewhere in the bed with their head covered up, with their gown on and their hair everywhere. Not eating or overeating. But I'm still trying to walk. And the only person that's keeping me and making me go is God. He the one I get my strength from. He the one I have to lean on. He's the one that I have to depend on. God and nobody else. When it's all said and done, it's going to be between you and God. And you got to answer for your report. Now, who report are you going to believe? With that, I share. With that, I share. Because we got to get up out of self. 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 Self ain't talking about nothing. Self. Self said, huh? <laughs> self, you ain't talking about nothing. You ain't hitting on nothing. You ain't doing nothing. Self ain't doing that with getting in some trouble, making things worse. I'm, I'm tired of self. Self, 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 self need to be checked. We got to do some self-evaluation. And so doing all of this and realizing all of this and going through all of this, it has not been easy. It has not. It has not been no good feeling. But I try to look at the good out of it. Because even when it looked bad, he's still working it out for your good. Even with my grandma. And y'all know I just had a whole breakdown about that. Even with my grandma, he had to move her in order for me to take the throne. He had to move her. It was necessary. Do it hurt? Yes. Do I wish things could have been different? I don't know. I just hope that it's all worth it. I never ask for it to be easy. If it's easy, I don't want it. I just want it to be worth it when it's all said and done. And with that, I share. You don't know a person's story. You don't know what a person has been through. People be so quick to judge or look at the outside. Y'all need to stop doing that person could be going through hell then been through hell and you look get up here and say something about what they driving what kind of house they stay in what the hell what just happened you done missed the whole memo you done missed the whole memo looking at my fingernail you done missed the whole memo Read my shirt. 
That's why I say people be lost in the south. And don't even be know how serious it is. That's why I say this shit bigger than me now. And it is. Because it's bigger than me. Do I understand what be in front of me? No, I do not. But I just ask God to give me understanding. And lead me. And guide me. Do whatever you may put before me. What did someone say? Nobody told me that the road would be easy. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. And that's when all the different layers and layers and layers have to come out. Because guess what? His will will be done. And it don't matter how he got to get your attention or what he got to do. So I ask y'all, don't make it so hard on yourself like some of us have. Don't let your lip be so hard. Surrender. Yield. Listen, I did try to be obedient. So, I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for letting me share. Sharing is most definitely caring. If I didn't love y'all or love the Lord, I wouldn't be on him. Trying to read no faith to faith. Who am I? So, I want y'all to take the Lord with you. And the rest, whatever the rest may be, it will follow. But if you listen to that, even with that, y'all ain't even listening. Because that's powerful. And it just came to me. Because guess what? If you take the Lord with you, if you take the Lord with you, and the rest will follow. Guess what? That means you are already head of the game. You are already ahead of the game. The rest going to come behind you. Behind you. You and God are already over there. So take the Lord with you. And the rest will follow. I love y'all, I love y'all, I love y'all. And please, put on the full arm. Because we definitely under attack. And we do not fight against flesh and blood. We fight against spirits and principalities. The only way to beat the spirit of the darkness and the evilness is by scripture and your word by prayer and supplement. So, I love y'all. I love y'all. And I love y'all. And I thank God for... Oh! Okay, I'm going to give y'all a wink. So I said, give you a wink. <laughs> there you go. 
Uh, let me try this old ragged eye. Oh, this this my good eye. Look, when I get that one good, boy, well, y'all better look out. So, I want y'all to have a blessed, blessed day. Today is Wednesday. Happy hump day. We all more finished with this week. Woo, woo, woo. Now, I want y'all to have a blessed day on purpose.